Should betting on sports be allowed? Never. You should not be able to bet. It encourages people, poor people, to spend money they don't have. America's politicians agree, and they've banned many forms of gambling, like gambling on the Internet. They say things like, it's not the right moral choice or sound public policy. There are enough dysfunctional families that my guests tonight say the government should get out of the way. Annie Duke is a former professional poker player. Patrick Basham is the author of Gambling, a Healthy Bet. A healthy bet? What, what are you talking about? I mean, I like to gamble, but I don't think it's healthy. Oh, it's real healthy. It's healthy for the individual. It's healthy for society. But you haven't heard this narrative, this tale before. No. Because the, the research money is, goes to those people who say, look, society's going to hell in a handbasket, either for moral reasons or because it causes all this addicted uh, problem gambling. Uh, but the truth is, the evidence doesn't back that up. It gives us, it's wonderful entertainment, wonderful recreation. It gives people Th That I get, gives it's recreation. Yep. But how is it healthy? It's healthy because it helps our brains and it helps our hearts. Older folks who play bingo, very popular, there's actually now proof that it helps um, stay Alzheimer's degenerative brain disease. Really? You're laughing, but it's true. The evidence is there, but the evidence hasn't been looked for because there's no government funding in making this argument. And you also say it teaches kids yes. and everybody about risk, about probability. Yeah. If we gamble, we learn to deal with risk, to understand risk. And that's why I think actually kids should start to appreciate gambling earlier rather than it being held off. All right, Annie, you don't buy this healthy part but it's not so much whether I buy it or not. Like when I'm teaching decision making, I talk about probability and I use gambling examples and, and things like that. I think that there's some use to it, but I don't think it's germane to the argument. In fact, I think that when people are arguing things like we should ban it because it's immoral mm -hmm. or because there's some sort of general harm to society where they're not really identifying that a person's doing direct harm to anyone, they're sort of going steps back in this sort of amorphous societal harm, that when you start arguing the other side and saying, but there's good things about gambling, that you're lending weight to the arguments that really shouldn't be germane to the legislative the, issue. The, the, the problem is that the moral argument against gambling has run out of political steam. More and more people like to gamble and are keen on and support people being free to gamble. So what the public health folks have done is they've taken cues from tobacco and obesity and said, this is a medical problem. It, it, it costs all of society. Uh, money, et cetera, et cetera. And Annie, as a pro professional poker player, you've seen this sort of casino sleaze and sure. people are chain smoking. Some people do lose all their money. It's, it's true, but it's a very small minority. So it's less than 1% of the people who engage in any kind of gambling activity that uh, have a gambling problem. And that's compared to alcohol, where 7 to 9% of people, for example, who use alcohol have issues. It's a really, really small problem. but. Even if those people are having problems, they're making those choices for themselves as consensual adults. They're not hurting anybody. And I don't think we're supposed to legislate to protect some small minority from their own bad decisions, you know, and hurt the majority who do it very in a healthy way and they really enjoy it in the same way they enjoy going to a restaurant or going to a movie. Uh, in cultures like the British or the Australians where they have far more gambling and have done for decades, the problem isn't any greater than any just... Yeah, it's assumed described. that if we legalize, yeah. it'll get worse. Absolutely. Yeah, they, they do a thought experiment. Oh, if we, have, if we have gambling on the internet and it's in people's homes, then, you know, our society yeah, will fall apart. The internet is worse. At least but, then you have to go yeah. to a casino. Yeah. But if you're alone so, at home... Well, but then why haven't they done the same thought experiment with online shopping? So there's the, all these people going broke to online shopping. The, we're not trying to ban the that. The truth is, with gambling prohibition, like any other kind of prohibition, people who want to do it, do it anyway. Right. There are all kinds of avenues to gamble. The question is, is it legal and regulated and the government gets its share of the tax, or is it under the table, shady, unregulated, the consumer doesn't have any protection? It's harder to deal with the problem gamblers and help them yeah. when it's illegal and they That's have right. to keep it a secret. And it's, pro it's harder to keep children from gambling online yeah. when it's illegal yeah, the, as well. We tried to get opponents tonight and <laughs> they didn't want to come, but I, one group, stop predatory gambling. Addicted gamblers are abandoning their children in casino parking lots around the world. The scarce stories are everywhere, but it's anecdotal. The real evidence that shows that the extent of the problem is massively overstated and critically, we never hear about the positive side of gambling, which is true and far outweighs the negative. I mean, I think the issue is that we don't legislate by anecdote. So 
Uh, well, we do, but well, we shouldn't. We shouldn't. <laughs> we're not supposed to legislate by anecdote. Fair point. So, you know, there was an anecdote that they were sort of slinging around for a long time about a kid who lost a lot of money gambling online and then robbed a bank. And this was the big anecdote that they were slinging around. But when we look at, and they were blaming that on internet gaming. When we look at in the UK, which has very good statistics on, on this mm. kind of thing, pre-internet gaming being introduced in post, there wasn't any increase in the percentage of, of gamblers who had issues. So these aren't the causes of the problems. And when we start saying, well, anytime somebody robs a bank, we have to look back at what caused them to do that. If it was a shopping problem or a gambling problem or you know whatever it was, we're gonna ban the thing that then made them make that bad decision. It's a huge slippery slope. Like, where are you going to draw the line? And we have this really good line of, are you doing direct harm? Is it mm -hmm. consensual? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And if we go beyond that to several steps back, like you might hurt your family or whatever, we're going to start not letting people sell donuts to people who are overweight, for example. Very little. Well, that may be coming. <laughs> that may be coming. Very, li very unknown to Mr. and Mrs. American taxpayer. They've actually paid for studies by their federal government on to what distinguishes gamblers from non-gamblers and the American government found that there is no difference well there is one slight difference not uh, gamblers gamblers are more sociable more neighborly more involved in their community and are more likely to donate to charity those are the only differences <laughs> Okay, I want to see these studies. <laughs> I believe you, but I just haven't seen those. Now we're talking about legalizing sports betting. Lots of opposition from the people who run sports. David Stern, NBA commissioner. The one thing I'm certain of in New Jersey, where they've just passed a law to legalize this, has no idea what it's doing and doesn't care because all it's interested in is making a buck. If there's more betting, there's more temptation to say, psst, throw this game. But even so, if you're legalizing it, then everything's out in the light exactly. and you're less likely to have that happen and where you actually get more problems is in college sports where they don't pay the players the nfl the nba the national hockey league the ncaa they've all joined a lawsuit against new jersey gambling threatens the integrity of sport it's <laughs> fundamentally at odd with the principle that the outcome of the contest must be perceived by the public as being determined solely on the basis well, first of honest they, they have their heads in the sand because yeah. gambling is already happening yeah. you can bet it's, on a game in las vegas right. in new jersey you can there's otbs on every corner and there's a tremendous amount of illegal gambling going on. If you bring it into the light, you can track these things and just pay the players yeah. according and, to what the, the market most, is. The most ardent supporters of fans of all of those leagues you've mentioned are also the most ardent illegal gamblers on That's those right. sports. Nobody will watch football without the spread. It's published in USA Today. <laughs> like for them to say that gambling is somehow hurting the sport, is it, they're, that's a completely like specious argument because at, people are watching the game because of the spread. I am. <laughs> yeah, thank you. All right, half the states, weirdly, even ban social gambling mm -hmm. in some form, a yeah. friendly game. Mm -hmm. um, I occasionally play, play poker. It's still legal in my state, fortunately, as long as no one profits by running the game. And I ask my fellow players about the bans in some states and the ban on Internet poker. We are intelligent enough to know our limits. Mm. Leave the government out of it. We're not all mentally and psychologically strong enough or able to govern ourselves with some people. The liberal wants government to do something. The, the addictive element of gambling forces, you know, the government to step in because it is addictive. That's stupid. Smoking cigarettes is an addictive behavior. They don't prevent us from smoking in our home, own home. They don't pre prevent us from drinking in our own home. I think the liberal guy made the <laughs> argument that the politicians make. It, it protect us from ourselves. Absolutely. Because we, whether we're adults or children, we are unable to make rational decisions for ourselves. Or for children, the casino, they can see, oh, he's a kid, we'll, won't let him do it. The bigger issue is not whether gambling is good. It's what is the slippery slope that you're getting on when you say that you want to protect people from their own addictions or their own or their own bad decisions. You have to start banning a lot of things that are bigger problems in front of it, and then all of a sudden, you think that you're protecting people from own, their own bad decisions, but you just have no freedom to make your own choices. And, it, and what I think is a bad decision might be different than what you think is. One last point uh, that to me shows the hypocrisy of government is the state lottery. Mm. We have state lotteries partly because there was a numbers racket. And, right. And organized crime mm -hmm. would 
let people pick a number and somebody would win a hundred dollars or a thousand dollars and we can't do this this is gambling we have to stop it oh we can't stop it well maybe if we compete with them since we're legal we'll drive them out of business so now we have state lotteries mm. and they are worse Absolutely. they take fifty percent of the that's bet, right and mostly from poor yeah. people and they run these disgusting commercials which suggest Give up your job, make right. a bet, and mm -hmm. happiness comes from having a lot of money that you didn't earn. Well, the, government, the government's cornered the market on uh, bad odds. The commercials and the billboards for lotteries are aimed at poor neighborhoods and poor people. It's so they're and the they worst buy offenders. They disproportionate numbers of the tickets. Gambling's no different than any f other form of economic enterprise. When the government runs it, it doesn't go so well, particularly for the consumer and the taxpayer. That's right. And there's no competition on the lottery. So if I go to Las Vegas mm -hmm. and there's competition on the slot machines, the worst slot yeah. machine I'm going to fi find is taking like five, for five cents on the dollar. The government owns the lottery, so they can take 50 cents on the dollar. If there were competitors on that, I can guarantee you'd be getting a much higher return on your back. Five cents from the casino, which is a scam. I would never touch a slot machine. <laughs> but 50% yeah. from my government. Yeah. Thank you, Annie Duke and Patrick Bain.